sometimes you just got to say, this is something I believe in and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what it takes. I've been passionate about horse racing since college. Um, no background at all in horse racing at all, other than going to Saratoga once a year. And in college, I used to go to the OTB, the off-track betting facility in New York City between baseball practice and college. And I said, I'm going to own a racehorse. And it took me till about 2007 to finally say, well, I'm going to try to figure this out. And I bought a $500 share of a $5,000 claimer for my stepson. And uh, he really didn't know horse racing. I said, this would be a great thing for us to do together. And we bought that. And the horse only ran two times, but it kind of got him hooked. And we really just explored that journey. You know, we, we had inexpensive horses the majority of the time. And then Bucaro came along. And he was a little bit older at that point. And I was living on the West Coast, and he was living back on the East Coast. And we finally had that big horse. And uh, I brought him out for the Breeders' Cup in 2017. I have these amazing pictures of us in the paddock, my whole family my wife, my daughter, and, and Corey, and Bucara ran great. A year or so later, um, as Bucara was starting to start his stallion career, uh, he called me and said, I'm, I'm buying a ninja motorcycle. And I'm a, you know, I'm a guy whose mother told him, you can't play a sport with it, that needs a helmet. And so I said, oh, Corey, you know, you got to be careful, you got to do this, but boy, he was so passionate about it. I mean, I could hear it in his voice the way I am about horses. And uh, he got it, and you know, his Instagram was full of these pictures, and uh, unfortunately, about three months after he got it, uh, a drunk driver ran into him on a back road in New Jersey and he was killed instantly. And this was right about the same time um, that Bucaro, I was really getting involved with Bucaro. And I, I have two amazing daughters, um, but Bucaro is basically my son. And, and I, I talk to so many people and you know, I know, I think probably half of them say, I know, are you going to mention Bucaro? And they don't really understand I'm kind of talking about my son. And, and that's my passion for him because I, I, I love the legacy of horse racing. I love looking at a pedigree and seeing the fifth dam or the stallion in there. And now here I sit you know, with Corey's memory, knowing that in 10 years, I'm gonna see a baby of a Bucaro broodmare. And then in 20 years, you know, it's there. It's like I've, I've kind of put Bucaro and Corey in something that no one, no one will ever forget. Almost every horse gets to a level where they're just not competitive with that next level of special horse. And I held my breath every time we moved Bucaro one level, you know, from Indiana uh, to some open stakes to Keeneland. The horse never disappointed. It was an amazing thing that, you know, we put him in the gate, we told him what to do, and he competed. I didn't know much about Ascot prior to it. And now it's, it's intertwined in my horse racing life now. So when we got the invite um, to go, you know, we, we weren't just going for the trip. Uh, you, know, you know, Tim got interviewed, and Tim's a very soft-spoken, doesn't say a lot of things. He got interviewed, he said, we're not here for the trip. And we weren't. And, um, you know, we'd felt confident. Little did we know we'd walk into, you know, Blue Point and Batash and uh, uh, Mabs Cross that year, who ended up being really three of the best runners in that race in 20 years. Uh, but Bucaro, uh, you know, he, he elevated himself every single time. Most of his races, I felt like I was having a heart attack. And uh, they're off in the Kingstand State. You know, I'm one of those guys when they're behind the gates, you're just going, I don't know if my heart is supposed to be going this fast, but it is. Race day, uh, you know, I never experienced. I'd been to, you know, we'd run in the Breeders' Cup, we'd run in, there's nothing like Ascot on, on a Royal Ascot day. The, you know, the city stops. Uh, everybody, everybody is there, there's a passion for it. It's a bucket list thing for anybody who has a nice horse. I've said before, I grew up really loving the Olympics, you know, and just seeing the world's best from all the different countries coming together. Ascot has done a fantastic job of, of pitting top, top horses against each other. So being able to be on that stage and then getting to run in a race like that was, you know, really a, hopefully not a once in a lifetime experience, but I'll take it if it was. So a lot of people in the States are heading over to the UK and buying some great blood stock and bring it over here. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Tom Peacock of the Racing Post um, a couple years back and we got to chatting and I said, you know what, if Bucaro can make it as a stallion, I'm gonna get a Bucaro over here and he's gonna get the job done in, in, in the UK. You know, now that he has his runners on the ground and I, and I have quite a bit of confidence that uh, what I thought was gonna happen is happening. He's passing on uh, kind of that grit Ideally, I'd like to buy a Bucaro that, you know, a yearling or two-year-old that I can kind of start the process getting over the UK. But I'm going to start from the, the ground up. And uh, I was over at Tattersall's uh, for the November-December sale. And we were looking to just buy a mare to breed to Bucaro. 
and I was fortunate enough to find a really nice filly that actually the Queen had bred and owned uh, named Improvise. I saw her races, she's similar to Bucero, just a hard knocking, speedy horse. And um, we were lucky enough to get her in the auction. And the plan is, is we brought her over here, we're actually here at Palm Meadows, uh, the Marcassi barn. The plan is to let her do what she can do here and then breed her to Bucero and then maybe make the full circle. And uh, you know, the queen invited me to run Bucero in the meet and now I'll bring uh, one of her uh, legacy horses back over um, by Bucero and you know, see if we can get the job done that way.